Hi, I'm Kaylin. And we are part of Ron Colley Central High School's Green Team, here to interview a few experts on climate change and its effects on tourism. We would like to respectfully acknowledge that the territory in which we gather on are the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We would also like to recognize the fact that their ancestors are the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all peoples of this province as we look for collective healing and true reconciliation. Thank you all for joining us today. I guess I'll start this off, so I'll just introduce you guys. Daniel Scott is a professor at the University of Waterloo who has done a great deal of works with Park Canada and the United Nations. Marie Jose is a principal plus strategy director for Origin Outside who recently wrote an article around the topic of climate change adaptation in the tourism industry. She's also a, one of the four board directors for Protect Our Winters Canada, which unites the outdoor sports community in Canada to take action against climate change. And Paul Din is a beekeeper and co-owner of Adelaide's Newfoundland Honey. He's created a new and innovative honey bee hike where tourists experience a bee reserve, learn about beekeeping and agriculture, and the importance of saving bee populations. So uh, Dan conducts uh, research at the University of Waterloo that not only looks at the effect that climate change has on tourism, but also how tourism contributes to climate change through greenhouse gas emission and land use change. So could you tell us a bit how you got here? Years ago, the UN World Tourism Organization wanted to have an understanding of how much you know does, does tourism contribute to the problem that we're all trying to address in climate change. And the team that I led came up with a number that was roughly about 5% of global emissions. Um, that was 15 years ago. There's been a newer estimate that puts that now at about 8%. So to put that into a bit of, little bit of context, if tourism was a country, it would rank third after China and the United States. So it's not something that we can dismiss or overlook. Um, the largest contributor is air travel. Um, and that's one of the tech areas where we need new technology to try to reduce those emissions. And that's one of the ongoing challenges the industry has to face. Um, but one thing that travelers don't realize is, you know, taking one less long haul flight a year is one of the biggest things that they can do and is almost equal to getting out of your car and, and taking your bike to work every, every day. Um, and so that's a big thing we can do for our own carbon footprint as well. When you think about tourism, it really relies on stability, having like a stable climate to attract customers that want to go to beaches or mountain bike trails or, you know, snowy mountains. So I think of, of all of the businesses that will be affected by climate change, and I really think that all types of businesses will be affected. Uh, I think a lot of experts agree that those that are operating in the travel and tourism and hospitality sectors are among the hardest hit early on um, because you know because that stable climate is obviously affected. In the last couple of summers have been the heat waves and the wildfires that you've seen. We we saw those in Canada. Um, you know, uh, heat dome that that even shocked uh, us as climatologists how severe that was in BC. But we saw you know tourists in Greece being evacuated off beaches in Spain and Australia, the same sorts of thing. In the, in the ski industry that MJ and I work in, um, for the first decade in 40 years, even with all with the massive investment in snowmaking, the average ski season across the United States and all the different region markets finally declined in the last decade. And, and biodiversity, whether it's you know disappearing or retreating glaciers in the Alps. Um, the health of polar bears in Churchill, I'm sure Paul can speak to um, other changes that you're seeing in the landscape that are a little bit closer to home for you guys. Certain destinations see more fewer uh, tourists because of climate change. So there is something called last chance tourism where people are actually going to parts of the world to see things um, before they might disappear, at least in those areas. So I mentioned Tur Churchill and its polar bear population before. Those, those tourists, you know, often will, will buy offsets for their carbon, so that's great to see. Has climate change produced more challenges in your work? Can you explain a few of those challenges and also any strategies that you have come up with? In terms of our work as a creative agency, the biggest challenge that climate change has created that comes to mind right away is all of the photo shoots and video shoots that we do on behalf of our clients. 
in my old days, when I first started the company, it was really easy to plan those photo shoots and those video shoots because the weather patterns were a little bit more predictable. And as you can imagine now, honestly, it's it's really difficult to, to plan these things. Is there going to be snow? Is there going to be smoke? Are the conditions safe for our, our employees to go and, and film or for the athletes to go there? We're planning photo shoots, for example, later in the winter season because we just can't really rely on on snow anymore. And then in the summer season, we have really flexible schedules to work around, honestly, to work around the fires, uh, the smoke and the heat waves to keep our our crews safe. The challenges, especially this year, we've noticed with the higher winds and and more rainfall that we don't have any snow and we use snow to insulate our beehives. So so we would actually put, if we would actually shovel snow around them and keep them a little bit warmer. And uh, we don't have that snow. And, and we've had, we have lots of rain, as you know. And uh, of course, rain and high winds. Well, you've got a beehive that you're trying to keep from tipping over. So we're using extra securing to keep the hives lashed in place. How has climate change affected the bee industry? It, it's a very large topic. Like we, we, need, we need honeybees basically for one third of our world's food production. The biggest problem is, is habitat loss and loss of flowers and, and trees and, and shrubs. And, and until people realize that uh, we need to start, you know, reestablishing natural areas and getting some flowers and, uh, and blooming going on in our cities and everywhere we are, uh, not just a park at the end of the street where people can say, oh, that's where the flowers are. We want, we want people to start, you know, take Take a lot of your lawn, that green lawn that has no flowers, just lifeless lawn, and uh, take that up and start planting some some native flowers that used to be there and, and some flowering trees. What would you just suggest to someone who wants to go into beekeeping now, especially with respect to our changing climate? I think it's a it's a very important and beautiful thing to get involved with. And I, I think anyone should... Uh, you know, get to know a local beekeeper or someone who might be close to you and, and you'll, you'll really get an appreciation of the environment again. I think especially for people uh, to, to become more involved with nature and understand it more, uh, because when you understand nature, it adds value to nature. I think it starts with what, what is your passion um, there's tons of jobs and technology, for example, that will be really a, have a huge impact on helping um, curve climate change. So it, it's not necessarily thinking about it just in the science context, but in the context of the things that you really enjoy in your life. Everybody's going to be affected by climate change in one way, shape or another. So whether you're in business, government, wherever your passion lies, um, it's really good to, to have the basics of climate change and understand how our world's changing and some of the big challenges that we'll face, um, particularly for your generation. Whenever possible, any chance you have to do an internship, just to give you a chance to be in organizations where you might have an interest, you should 100% take them. I wouldn't be in my job if I hadn't done internships um, when I was your age, so really encourage you to do that. Uh, so thank you all for being here despite your busy schedules. We had a wonderful time with you guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Us too. Thanks for having us. Bye, you guys. Appreciate it.